besides magnetism, uh, he is an expert in uh, ancient Greek, Pali, and Russian, and has worked for various governmental agencies around the world as a translator. And he was one of the founders, uh, or he is the founder of a popular website which focused on uh, the teachings and history of Buddhism with a heavy uh, focus on the etymology of its related languages. Um, uh, he's also one of the top ten in the world uh, online influential reviewers of camera and photography equipment, and he has like over 5,000 videos on his YouTube channel. Uh, you know, obviously uh, very passionate about learning, exploring, and, and teaching about magnetism, and, um, and the book, uh, it's, it's dedicated to the uh, founders of a lot of the electrical sciences, uh, some of the people that we really want to pay attention to. Um, that paved the way for a lot of those sciences with uh, clarity, and that includes uh, Tesla, Maxwell, Steinmetz, Heaviside, and the book is also dedicated to uh, Eric Dollard. So help me welcome Ken Wheeler. This is the Ferro cell. I wanted to tell you I actually found this during the second edition of my book. This is an invention of uh, Tim Vandarelli. He actually has a new quadrupolar electromagnetic device, and even though he has seven patents, his latest one is uh, very fascinating and. Uh, his lawyers actually had to have him bring the device down. He didn't believe that it actually existed since it seemed so Star Trek and fantastical. But I want you to think this entire lecture is based around this device, but it's an interesting teaching tool as far as understanding you know, the conjugate nature of the magnetic and the dielectric. Nothing I discuss in this lecture will fundamentally run contrary to the well-established electrical theory of the greatest minds such as Faraday, Steinmetz, Oliver Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell, or Tesla. Why I myself have been completely interested in understanding magnetism in its entirety for sake of understanding it alone, I've helped several people on multiple fronts, namely using arrayed magnetic and gold sluicing devices since much of the gold that's actually lost in sluicing is baby powder gold. You use uh, the magnetic field to apply the diamagnetic nature of gold, so actually decelerating out gold from the laminar flow of the water so that you actually catch more gold. So while I'm completely interested in understanding magnetism for the sake of magnetism, obviously the practicality of using magnetism in everyday life, I for one, for example, I came up with a device, I got tired of paying a plumber to come over and plumb my pipe, so I created a magnetic scrubbing device. So let's discover the uh, conjugate nature of magnetism and dielectricity, which are mutually the foundation for everything in the cosmos. But to do so, we actually have to define polarity and certainly so uh, incommensurability. I found out the cheap way of actually making a, a, a housing is using uh, the uh, metal aluminum ducting tape that you get in any hardware store. Other than the expensive optically flat glass, I mean, you're just looking at three drops of liquid between two optically flat pieces of glass that are sandwiched together. And once you squeeze them together, two and a half of those drops out of the three are squeezed out of the side, which you wipe off and then uh, continue to seal off either with like super glue gel or UV curing glue. You ring it with LED lights or you can use continuous fiber optic and those have been around now for 50 years. You can buy them for like $20. I mean, if you buy a new one, they're like $500, but you can buy them for $20 used on eBay. It can't be anything if it has no attribute. What's the ether? What's the nature of the ether? Well, in stress or strain, it's a dielectric. It'd be electromagnetism. No, 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 no. Those are modality expressions of the ether, like water and steam and ice. I mean, a child would think those are different things. Human beings don't think that water is different from ice or steam. Why do we try to pigeonhole everything? Is there anything that doesn't have at least one attribute? And how could the ether be any different? The ether is not free of this principle. Obviously, the ether has to have an attribute. Does it follow any particular paradigm? Like light and illumination? Is illumination something autonomous? In this simple analogy of the hourglass shape, obviously here we have no space, no time, no polarity. Space is certainly, I mean, excuse me, time is not a thing. Time is only in the ancient Indians and the Greeks and the Egyptians said this as well. There's no such thing as time. Time is only a measure of magnitudes. So here we have no space, no time, no polarity, no magnetic flux. So here we have space and time, force and motion that actually define the torus. And here we have the hyperboloid of increasing inertia and acceleration to a null point. Obviously, the sand goes from one side to the other, so we can't take this analogy too, th too far. But I mean, it's simply a uh, illustrative thought diagram of understanding. I, well, nobody talks about a hyperboloid in, in conventional uh, linguistics. And you, you never come up to your coworker and talk about, well, you know, hey, I saw a cool hyperboloid. So I had to give a, a visual demonstration of a hyperboloid and use an hourglass analogy. People don't realize that all is the field itself, just as magnets do not accelerate towards each other, neither is there anything present in the void of a ring magnet. Yet when viewing same underneath a supercell, it has the exact same magnetodielectric image as the pole of any other magnet. 
It might be simple enough to think of a magnet which has been charged with 2400 volts and 12 amps DC as a permanent field photograph of the charge which has passed through it. Obviously, the uh, CRT tube is nothing other than an electrostatic projector, i.e. dielectric. So what happens when we take a magnetic field and apply it to that? Let's first start off with the cross pattern. Well, that's one pole of a magnet. Here we actually see a uh, clockwise of the cross. We flip it over. Here we see a counterclockwise of the cross. This is the same thing. Uh, you see, unless you worry about destroying your old tube TV set, which you, you could do, even if it has a degausser on it, you could easily damage it. It would definitely shock yourself pretty good, as I've done a few times.